In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the 2011 AP Physics C E&M Free Response Question, Question 1, where we will be applying Gauss's Law over a series of questions A through F. So, at the beginning of the problem, they give us the information that a non-conducting, thin, spherical shell has uniform surface charge density, sigma, on its outside surface and no charge anywhere inside. Part A of Part A through F asks us to use Gauss's law to prove that the electric field inside the shell is zero everywhere. Describe the Gaussian surface that we choose to use. To first solve part A, we want to draw the actual sphere that is being shown, which is being modeled on the screen here. But then, in order to see inside of the sphere, we want to cut it in half to see its cross-sectional area, which would appear like this. And because it tells us in the question that the charge is located around the shell of the sphere, we have, a, we have drawn little green positive arrows surrounding the entire cross-sectional area of the sphere to represent the charge surrounding it. The electric field emanates from this sphere at 90 degrees from every single point of the surface area. So imagine a sun when you were a kid and you drew the sun, you had little arrows pointing off it in all directions intersecting at 90 degrees. That's essentially what the electric field looks like emanating from a sphere's charge. So in order to accurately capture all of this electric field to accurately measure it, we want to put it, it inside something that will actually capture these electric field lines, which the only other thing that can capture these electric field lines at 90 degrees is a sphere itself. So we'll use a sphere inside of a sphere as seen here, where the blue represents the actual sphere that, of charge and then the red represents the Gaussian sphere that we're going to use to calculate it. The reason why we want to use a sphere inside of a sphere is because in the electric flux equation, the integral of E dot dA, the dot stands for cosine. And we multiply the electric field times the cosine of zero as it is the cosine of the angle between the electric field and the area vector which emanates out at 90 degrees from the sphere. And we look at the angle between these two vectors which is zero degrees. And when the cosine is zero, it gives us the maximum electric field as the cosine of zero equals one. And when the cosine is 90 degrees, then it gives us the minimum electric field since the cosine of 90 is zero degrees, negating the electric field. And so in order to calculate the maximum electric field, we want to have it where the cosine is zero degrees, just making the multiplier one and canceling it out. Which is why we will use a sphere inside of a sphere. So if we try to calculate the electric field of this Gaussian sphere inside of the, the non-conducting charge with the, with the actual charge on the shell, we can say that the integral E dot dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught, which is a constant. And we know, from, we know that flux equals flux, and these are the two equations used to solve for flux. And from previous knowledge, we also know that we want it to interact at a cosine of 90 degrees. So we'll have E times cosine of 90 times dA equals Q enclosed over e. epsilon naught. And the integral will simplify to EA equals Q enclosed over e. epsilon naught. Now for the Gaussian surface, we want to use the surface area of a sphere. And we know that the equation for the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So the equation will then move to E times 4 pi r squared equals Q enclosed over e. epsilon naught. And then we finally need to look for our other variable, Q enclosed, since we're solving for E. And because the Gaussian sphere is inside of the sphere that we're actually calculating, and the charge of the sphere we're calculating is on the surface, we notice that there is no Q actually enclosed in this Gaussian sphere, which makes Q zero. And we know that zero divided by any number is zero, which will make the electric field zero, proving that there is no electric field within this sphere of charge. Part B asks us, the charges are now redistributed so that the surface charge density is no longer uniform. Is the electric field still zero everywhere inside the shell? Yes, no, or cannot be determined, and we have to justify it. So in the previous example, we saw what a uniform charge distribution looked like, which around the sphere, the charge is equally 
are equally distributed around the sphere in which it cancels out so that there's no charge within the sphere itself. We also know that the charge is located on the surface of the sphere because in the problem it tells us the sphere is a conductor and we know that all conducting spheres have no charge located within them. But if you look to the right we see what a non-uniform charge would look like where the charge is clustered in certain areas but not in other areas. This would not allow for the charge itself to be canceled out, which would create a charge inside of the sphere because the sphere is now polarized. This would mean that our answer is no because there is now a charge within the sphere since the lack of uniformity does not allow for the charges on either side of the sphere to equally cancel out. Part C asks us to consider a small condu conducting sphere with a charge of positive Q whose center is at corner A of a cubical surface as shown below, which will be shown later. For which faces of the surface, if any, is the electrical flux through that face equal to zero? And we have to explain. So first we're going to draw our box, where we have our cube with vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and the sphere is located at point A. So we know from earlier that any surface that is at the charge at zero degrees, there will be no flux through it because flu the charge cannot pass through a parallel structure. It has to have something to pass through. So now if we look at the cube and draw little radial lines out from the sphere, as we can see on the picture, we notice that square ABCD, as well as square ABGH, and square ADEH all touch the sphere at zero degrees which means that there will be no charge passing through these three squares creating a zero flux or zero charge through these three surfaces and that is because they line up at zero degrees with the charge as it emanates from the sphere and that's why these three faces will have zero charge and zero flux through them leaving faces BCFG HEFG and CFED to have flux passing through those three faces of the cube. While in the diagram we see three dots on the three squares that were just mentioned with arrows pointing to them, it does not mean that the electric field stops at these points. Uh, the electric field emanates from the charge and just keeps going off in all directions infinitely. The dots are through the middle of the squares just to show that the electric field would be passing through these three faces specifically. So don't mistake that for the charge just being captured by those three faces in general. Part D asks us at which corner or corners of the surface does the electric field have the least magnitude? To answer this question we have to think about what kind of sphere was given to us and we were told it was a conducting sphere. So for all conducting spheres the charge is located on the surface of the sphere and there is no charge inside of the sphere. That is for all conducting spheres. So if we take a look, vertice A is within the sphere itself, which means there is no charge. Whereas vertice B, C, G, F, H, E, and D all at some point will have a flux pass through them through some phase. So that means there will be some sort of charge located at each one of the vertices. While at vertice A, at point A, there will be no charge because there is no charge within a conducting sphere. So the answer to this question would be A because there is no charge within it. Part E asks us to determine the electric field strength at the position that we have indicated in the previous part, Part D, in terms of Q, L, and fundamental con constants as appropriate. So what we can pull from this is we know that flux equals Q enclosed divided by E epsilon naught. And from what we remember last time, the charge is a conducting sphere, which means there is no charge within the sphere itself at point A. So this means that Q is equal to zero. And zero divided by any number is, is zero overall, which means that flux in the electric field will also equal zero as Q is zero. This brings us to the final part, part F. Given that one eighth of the sphere at a point is inside the surface, calculate the electric flux through phase C, D, E, F, which is a phase that will have flux pass through it as we talked about earlier. So what we remember earlier is that flux is equal to Q enclosed divided by a constant epsilon naught. 
So in the, in the problem, it tells us that one-eighth of the charge is inside the sphere. So we can assume that Q enclosed is Q divided by 8, because that is equal to one-eighth the charge. And the charge is just simply Q. And we also know that from, the, from earlier, when we were deciding how many faces the charge was passing through, we know that there were three faces that the charge was passing through, three faces that have flux. So if it's asking us for one face to be calculated, we would say that we are calculating one-third of the total flux as each face gets an equal amount of flux through it that we are going to calculate. So with that being known, we can say that the flux of C, D, E, F is equal to Q over 8, one-eighth of the Q, which was given in the problem, divided by epsilon naught, which is a constant, and then we divide all of that by 3, which will give us the equation, the flux of C, D, E, F, equals Q over 24 epsilon naught, which will give us the flux through face C, D, E, F. So the reason why we know this to be true, that the flux passing through each face is equal, because the electric field radiates at 360 degrees from the sphere of charge, uh, and it's positioned at the corner of the sphere, it means that the each of the three faces that do get charge through them, they will e get the same amount of charge through each of them because of the position of the sphere and how the corners are arranged, causing there to be an equal amount of charge through each face, which causes us to be able to easily break the equation into thirds without having to do harder calculus.